NBA season is here, and today I am spending 30 seconds on every single NBA team. Now, in the first part of these, I did the Eastern Conference teams. You can find that video. Uh, I'll link it in the description. And then now, of course, it is time for the Western Conference. I'm just going to go 30 seconds through each team, try to hit the main points, I think, for the season, kind of thoughts on where they might be at the end of the year. Then at about the halfway point of the season, right before the All-Star break, I'll hop on again and do these again. Kind of just follow up and see where they're at, what's going on. Um, really stuff just like that. The The NBA season starting, it's crazy. It's already here. Um, I know this is always a really exciting day for me. I'm just excited to see all of the new players, all of the rookies, uh, people like Zion coming back. Uh, it's just, it's an exciting time. Uh, if you have thoughts on these teams or any of the teams from the Easter Conference video, part one, whatever you want to call it, please leave them in the comments. I think this is a great spot for predictions, discussion, and just kind of just kind of really, you know, appreciating and loving basketball and enjoying that the NBA is back. So any of those, please leave them in the comments. Uh, if you're new to the channel, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, leave a like or subscribe if you did. Um, I think that's it, though. So let's uh, let's get started with the Western Conference. Let's put 30 seconds on the clock. So the Dallas Mavericks are up first and. This team's going to go as far as Luke is going to take him. He's an MVP favorite for a reason. He's the MVP favorite, actually. I think this team is probably one guard away, though. They added in Christian Wood and JaVel McGee, which gives them more rim protection, better rebounding, and rim runners for Luka, but he's still the primary creator. Spencer Dinwiddie is there and did look good, but I think this is a team that might like be a sneaky Mike Conley-type signing. I should clarify trade, not signing. I, I realize that. So, all right, we'll go to the next team. The Denver Nuggets are probably my favorite to win the West right now. They are loaded with talent. Nikola Jokic just gets better every year. They're bringing back Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., who look incredible so far in the limited minutes we've seen them in the preseason. They added DeAndre Jordan, but the big addition for me is they brought in Bruce Brown. And I think Bruce Brown is going to be someone who fills exactly what this Denver team needs very nicely. He can score with when needed, but his primary thing is to just lock up the wing. Next up, we got the defending champ Golden State Warriors. And this 30-second outlook would have been a lot different if I did these two weeks ago. Uh, now this team is kind of just going to be like a powder keg. Everyone is going to be waiting to see what happens between Draymond Green and the rest of the team, and specifically Jordan Poole. That's going to be hanging over them like an albatross, especially if they start to slow or struggle. Say they come out and lose ring night to the Lakers tonight, that's going to be bad. But everything says this team should be just an elite upper tier Western Conference team again. There's no reason that they shouldn't be repeating. Next up, we have the Houston Rockets, who probably are going to be a little too good to full-on tank for Victor Wembanyama. They have the uh, number two pick, Jabari Smith. They have Jalen Green, Kevin Porter Jr., a lot of young talent here. And I'm someone that really likes Steven Silas. I think he is a great coach, and I think he's the perfect type of guy to kind of guide this team and help them develop. I don't think they'll be a play-in team, and I don't think they'll be the worst. So they'll probably be somewhere in the 12 to 14 range, but they're going to be a ton of fun to watch. Next up, we have the LA Clippers, uh, probably my second choice behind the Denver Nuggets to be at the top of the Western Conference. Hate to say it because I am a Laker fan, but the Clippers are probably the deepest team out West. They bring in John Wall. They bring in... Um, bring back Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. This is a team that will probably have no problem resting these players throughout the season, finding combinations of lineups that work. They had a preseason game where Terrence Mann didn't even play, and that dude was like the most important guy, fifth most, like, it's unbelievable the depth that these guys have. So I think they're going to be one of those teams that can just turn it on when they need, and they'll just ride it out. Sorry, that was over, uh, <laughs> over 30 seconds for sure. All right, so next up, we have the LA Lakers, my team, the uh, cross-arena rivals of the Clippers. It's looking bleak, guys. I can't lie. I was very optimistic beforehand, and now I'm kind of staring down, hey, let's watch Max Christie and Scottie Pippen Jr. and hope it goes well. <laughs> um, Anthony Davis saying all the right things. Darvin Ham saying all the right things about Russell Westbrook tank, taking on a bench role, a sixth-man role, but then he went and got hurt like eight minutes into his first time coming off the bench. 
This team is a pulled hamstring away from unmitigated disaster, made worse by the fact that they do not have their picks. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get back. I've, I've gone off the rails a couple here. Thirty seconds. We're gonna get it back. Memphis Grizzlies are next, and they are probably uh, alongside the Clippers and the Nuggets, one of the deepest teams in the West. I think they're gonna just continue their upward trajectory because they're a team that does not seem complacent. They don't seem like they're content being like, okay, we've arrived now. They have Danny Green coming in who will give them an extra boost on the wing and three-point shooting, uh, something that they struggled with a lot when Dylan Brooks started going cold. So he should fill a lot of their needs, especially in the playoffs. Next up, we have the Minnesota Timberwolves who made a huge splash by teaming up Carl Anthony Towns with a trade for Rudy Gobert putting together a pretty expensive core of Gobert, Towns, Anthony Edwards, and D'Angelo Russell, who, the four of them, who knows what it's going to look like. There's talk that uh, Cat and Ant-Man and D'Lo and Gobert will share the court with one another at certain times to space it all. And I think Chris Finch might be able to pull it off, but I need to see what that looks like first. Next up are the New Orleans Pelicans. Zion Williamson is back. They'll have a full season with CJ McCollum. Hopefully Brandon Ingram is healthy uh, this whole year because he is an all-star caliber player as well. And really this is just a, this is a CJ McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Zion, big three that we need to see stay healthy. Steven Adams should continue to just do Steven Adams things and take a lot of load off of Zion's body when it comes to like battling in the paint. But this isn't going to just be something where, you know, the potential for this team is going to go so high or so low depending on how Zion goes and his health that it's going to just be fascinating to watch night in and night out. We have the OKC Thunder up next, a uh, team I really liked and am really excited to watch even after the injury to Chet Holmgren. Uh, it's disappointing that he won't be out there because of the, the great chemistry he showed in brief flashes with Josh Giddy in Summer League, but... It'll still be a fun team because the players are fun. But the injury to Chet, preseason injuries to Shea, this is probably going to be a shut it down tank for Victor Wembanyama team again. And that's difficult for, for Thunder fans because they're great fans. And this is a team full of young talent that at some point they're going to have to either trade or let start performing. Phoenix Suns are next and man, this team is a chemistry disaster. Uh, who knows what's going to happen with this. The variance for this team is so high. You could tell me they missed the playoffs. You could tell me they make the Western Conference Finals. And I would believe basically anything in between there as well. Uh, Devin Booker's back. DeAndre Ayton seems to be back against his will. Chris Paul is a year older, so we'll see if he can return to form or if he's going to look like that player from the Dallas series this last playoffs. But I really don't know what to expect with these guys. Next up, we have Portland, and Portland's a really interesting one. They brought in Gary Payton II from free agency, drafted Shaden Sharp, who should be able to fill it up pretty quickly on the stat sheet uh, once he comes back. And really, this team this season is going to be about getting Dame acclimated with these new players that they have. They traded for Jeremy Grant. They traded for Josh Hart last year as part of the C.J. McCollum trade. And Dame hasn't really played with any of them. So it's going to be Dame fitting in with those guys. And then Anthony Simons fitting into the starting lineup alongside a volume shooter like Dame. The Sacramento Kings are next. They just signed the, the Australian hero, the Tasmanian devil, Matthew Della Vadova. They'll have a full season of De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis. And Keegan Murray looks like an absolute steal. Not to mention they also traded for Kevin Herter. So there's going to be a lot of wing shooting on this team. And if Darren Fox and Davion Mitchell can develop as playmakers, and particularly if Fox can, can flash that elite vision, the Kings might be a fun play-in type of contender. Next up, we have another team that is probably going to be tanking the hell out of this season. That is the San Antonio Spurs. They uh, drafted Jeremy Sojan, who looks like he's going to be a very dynamic, very Spursian player. But... This is a team that can see the light through the tr see the see the forest through the trees. Greg Popovich has already basically said, "Hey, don't bet on us to win the title. That'd probably be pretty dumb." Uh, this is going to just be a year of development, and if they can acquire assets and get Victor Wembanyama, then all the better for it. And finally, Utah Jazz, Tankapalooza, it is on. 
Danny the Asset Man Ainge is out here trading Gobert, Donovan Mitchell, acquiring like 12 draft picks in the process, he's going to be tanking hard for Victor Wembanyama. This is a team that is not done blowing it up by any means. They've Colin Sexton in. They still have Mike Conley on the roster, Jordan Clarkson. All of those guys are going to be pretty uh, hot trade commodities. So look for the Jazz to tank it and just try to acquire assets as much as they can. So it's a lot worse with the, with the West than I was with the East in terms of sticking to the time. Uh, but I really think that the West has a lot of really interesting stories going on. I think there's going to be a lot of competition for those top six spots. And then the plans, the plans could go any way imaginable. I think there's any possibilities. I think Portland's going to be a really fun team to watch. I think the Kings night tonight might be a fun team to watch. Uh, the Lakers for the drama portion of it. I think teams like the Warriors and the Nuggets are going to be fun just to see, you know, that system, their system of basketball being played, the morbid curiosity of the Suns, and then also just the youth, the youth movement in San Antonio. Like, who knows how many games the Spurs are going to win, but I'll be damned if it's not going to be one of those teams that I want to watch night in and night out and see how Jakob Pertle Josh Primo, Devin Vassell, and Keldon Johnson are looking. Like, I, I love the thought of just watching a super young team trying to play fast and learning on the fly. Uh, and that's one of the things that really just has me excited about the season this year is just there's so many things that interest me about every team. Uh, but I think that's everything for these videos. If you have any thoughts on any of these teams, predictions, anything like that, like I said before, please let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, Please leave it a like, subscribe, let me know uh, if you want more things like this in the future. Really appreciate everyone taking the time to watch any of these or any of the things I'm posting. It's It's been really cool to see things kind of steadily, progressively improve bit by bit. Uh, it is a big encouragement and I do appreciate it. So thank you very much for watching. Remember, two games tonight. First one I believe is at 4.30 uh, Pacific Time, 7.30 Eastern. It is the Celtics and the 76ers. And then we got Warriors, Lakers, Ring Knight, and Golden State. Can the Lakers play spoiler? So enjoy those games. Thank you very much for watching, and I will be back.